It is 5.15 and this is alttabme.com, podcast number 16, how to make you some money, part two. Part one can be seen at alttabme.com or the front page of uh, guru.com, uh, not guru, uh, guildwars2guru.com. Um, today we're going to be talking about uh, some of the things that might have changed since podcast number one about the uh, how to make money. Uh, a couple things were patched, a couple things were changed, so we're going to address those. As well, uh, we are live every Monday at 5.15 p.m. Eastern at alttabme.com slash live. You can also then see the podcast posted to YouTube every Wednesday uh, at 12 a.m. Yeah. So, <clears throat> a couple things we wanted to touch on before we began the podcast. Uh... Arcanix is the guild of alttabme.com, and we just recently reopened applications. Uh, we kind of trimmed the fat of inactive members, you know, people that... We, we formed our guild prior to the game coming out, so a lot of people tried it, didn't like it, or, you know, people dwindled or whatever. We still have a really good user base. We do a lot of, uh, a lot of cool events, and so we decided to open up applications once more. Um, we put an emphasis on those that are in the European time zones because we have a bunch of players there and they could use some friends. Uh, specifically, we have a bunch of people from Australia, we have people from Germany, um, and I like to say Denmark, England, but somebody will Sweden. yell at me because it's not Denmark, but it sounds like Denmark, but it's the same time zone, so it's Denmark to me. Uh, what else? <clears throat> oh, there Pretty is, good. yeah. There is an event coming up. Let me pull up the uh, let me pull up the picture here. So there is an event coming up called Pink Day. Um, I think this is really cool. A, I like pink. B, it's for a good cause. Uh, pink Day is to support the awareness of breast cancer as well as all other cancers uh, that may be out there. And what's cool about it is that people are organizing events in Guild Wars Two. It started off in Guild Wars One. And they're bringing it back to Guild Wars 2. And Arcanix has been kind enough to volunteer to help out. And so on Yak's Bend, our server, we will be hosting events. Uh, I'm not sure the exact details yet. I haven't gotten the email uh, with everything that I need. However, uh, if you go to alttabme.com, you can check out the Pink Day event in Guild Wars 2. Check out all the details. Basically, everybody comes to Lion's Arch. Uh, we have a bunch of events, we have a diving board competition, there's real life prizes you can win, and uh, everybody dresses in pink. So hopefully a big big turnout, and you know, it gives awareness to those that might not know, and uh, it's nice to see it in a game too, because even though these are virtual worlds, um, you know, they do spill, off, spill over into our real life world. So it's definitely a cool event, you can check it all out at alttabme.com, or you can go to Guild Wars 2 Guru for the original thread, and they are constantly updating it. You can also donate to the event, um, both at alttabme.com, there's a donate button that goes to their link, as well as on Guild Wars 2 Guru, it's the same link. And if you want to organize one of the events yourself, uh, you can contact, um, it's, oh, okay, you can contact Rhonda, and her email is admin at gw en Dot com. So if you want to host it on your event, if you want to volunteer for something, you can go ahead and contact her. So with that said, uh, hopefully we'll see you all out there in your coolest pinks. I know I have tons of pinks. My mesmers are already pink. I have butterflies. I got everything, man. So uh, a bunch of us are going to be helping to run that event. So you can come out, meet the guild. Maybe you're interested in the guild and you want to just come out, hang out with us. Or if you want to support the, uh, the cause, that would be awesome. I think it's a really cool event, and I'm glad to be a part of it. So, <clears throat> all right. Oh, let me just say this right now. I have a cold. I'm recovering from a pretty nasty zombie-eating flesh virus, eat-your-face-from-Florida kind of cold. And uh, so every now and again, I might cough or clear my throat. I apologize dearly for those that have headphones on and are just listening to this as a podcast. I will try my best to mute myself. Before that happens, I can't guarantee it, as we already saw when I tried to start the podcast and started coughing. So that is about it. 
Uh, I think that covers the, uh, the intro there. Should we jump right into uh, to how to make some money part two? I think what we wanted to talk about is we wanted to talk about uh, some of the changes that happened since our last podcast, some of the patches and things that might affect the information that you got from podcast one and we want to make sure that it's accurate going forward. So Mike, take it away. Yep. Yeah. Um, it was great. I got done with the podcast and, uh, we had this big spiel on mystic salvage kits where, Oh, they're so cheap. You can buy all the stuff with karma. And six hours later, eight hours later, arena net says, Nope, we're going to make that. So you can't buy those things with karma anymore. You're going to have to pay coin for them. <laughs> so <laughs> you broke the game, uh, Mike, you broke spend. the game. I broke it. And it, I have a feeling it was always going to happen because they used to have salvage kits on the weaponsmith vendor for karma prices. And it was not just salvage kits. It was a lot of stuff like uh, gathering tools and stuff. They changed all those to coin like they were always intending to do. It always looked like a fluke. But even redoing the math, um, the mystic salvage kits are still a better deal than the master salvage kits, which do the exact same thing. Uh, the master salvage kits come out to about 61 copper per salvage. The mystic salvage kits still, if you're buying them with coin, comes out to close to 30 co uh, copper per salvage, depending on uh, how much gold is going for, because you do have to buy some things with gem, which you are usually converting from gold to gems. So still get the Mystic Salvage Kits for your high-end stuff. Um, and that leads me into the next thing. There's been a lot of wonder and back and forth of what it actually means when the Salvage Kit says chance to recover higher uh, quality items. Yeah, that's been a big question. Some people question. say it's a higher, yeah, some people say it's a higher tier of items. So like instead of copper, you get iron, <laughs> or instead of silk, you get gossamer or something like that. Some people are saying that it's um, a higher rarity item. So instead of white quality items, you get blue. Instead of blue, you get green. A lot of what the consensus is, is that it's both, but nobody knows for sure. So um, a couple people went through and they, they took the, the salvage kits and started salvaging white salvage items that only give you white quality items back as materials. They don't give you any fine crafting materials like bones or venom sacks or any of that stuff. So they were testing it to see if they would get more of the higher tier items and it shows that they really kind of have, but the percentage to get those is a lot less than you would think they are. The, uh, it turns out there's a base percentage for any salvage item. So we're, they did testing on the highest level of cloth salvage, which drops either silk or gossamer, which is tier five and tier six cloth items. And they found through testing somewhere, I think they're in the realm of 2000 salvages right now that there's a link for that, right? Mike, I can pull up. Um, I, I swear yes, there was there something. should be a link. Yeah, it's the math on salvage kits link, inquisitive dot dash myths. Got it. Spot dot Got it. Um, so what this guy, this guy did about 1500 himself and he used a couple of the lower level ones. Uh, scroll down to the next post down. He, the first post on the page is a secondary test that he's done. What they've pretty much found out that salvage items have an 11% or thereabouts chance to drop the higher tier of item than what that item is. So like it normally drops silk, but it's got 11% chance to drop gossamer. And when you use a higher level salvage kit, it gives you another percentage on, that's multiplied by that 11%. So it's not so a Mystic Salvage Kit is supposed to give you 25% better chance of getting higher items. It's not actually 25% more. It's 25% more of that 11%. So really it's only 
uh, 1.25% more. I'm sorry. It's uh, instead of 11%, it's 13.75%. And the difference between a basic and a mystic or a master is really only about 1% difference. So what it comes down to, and they showed that the crude one that I was recommending last time to, to use for all your salvage items, your white name salvage items, is pretty much a 0% chance. So the jump from the crude to the basic is a big jump, but the jump from basic all the way up to master or mystic, which are the same thing, is, is very slight. So what you want to do is pretty much what I recommended last time, except for instead of using crude salvage kits, you want to use basic salvage kits. Mm, yeah. Those are the other white named ones. <clears throat> it will give you about the same amount over the long run. It will be, just be a slightly less chance to give you more of the higher items, but it will be much better than a crude. So anything that's going to give you tier one items, normally cloth or and leather, you kind of want to want to check it against the uh, prices of the the mats, the ore, leather. <clears throat> but any any white-named weapons or armor or stuff, you can use the basics on that for the Tier 1 stuff. Any salvage item, white-named salvage item, you want to use the basic kit on all those, no matter what tier it is. And then on level 70 or above, yellow items is the only time you want to salvage any anything higher than tier one really and you want to use a mystic salvage kit on that because it will give you one of the best chances for the the best chance for the money to get you ectoplasms but you also got to weigh that against the fact that if you sell that yellow item on the trading post is it going to get you more money than the cost of an ecto so that you could actually buy the Ecto with that money and then still have some silver left over. Nice. See, Which that's, that's info for me, leads man. Me into, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I have a tendency to sell most of my yellows. That's what like, I do. If they're, if they're like, Ectos are about 18 silver-ish, 17 to 18 silver. If the item is less than one and a half times an Ecto, I'm going to sell it on the trading post because... I figure over the long run, I will get at least that many Ectos out of it, so I'm breaking even at that point. So yeah. that'd be about 24 silver for me right now. It's if all I about make, the Benjamins, if I man. For silver. You just got to have right. the money in the pocket. <laughs> that's, that's what this whole podcast is all about. Um, so, yeah, there's that. And uh, that kind of leads me into another thing that I was pointing out that I missed. I was talking about opportunity cost on the last one. I'm not going to go over the whole thing again. But part of opportunity cost that I missed is your time is worth money. No matter what you're doing, there's a certain amount of money or gold that you should be normally getting out of it. If you're playing casual, whatever, you're still making some gold because you're killing stuff, you're getting loot drops, you're getting coin drops. And if you care about getting that stockpile of gold, you want to make sure that what you're doing is going to earn you the same amount as if you were doing something else. So if you're farming, that might be worth, if you're farming an ore and you've got a really good farming route and you can make three gold an hour doing that, you don't want to stop and go to the trading post unless you can make that three gold an hour also there. Or you don't want to craft unless you're doing that, if money is your main goal. Now you have to, each person has to balance that with what's fun for them because nobody that hates grinding is going to want to go grind just because it gets them an extra 50 silver or even two gold an hour. It's got to be a good jump of money. They'd rather be playing the trading post or crafting or doing whatever's fun for them. Well, I mean, you know, I personally, or, I like to jump up and down off the bank to the trading post, onto the crafting station, <laughs> slash dance, all while being on the trading post and trading stuff because that to me is more fun than fighting, you know, maggots for five hours. So, Right. Or... For you, you like going to World v. World and just picking up bags as you kill everything. That works too, man. And <clears throat> e even that, you're getting coin, you're getting items. I'm going to so tell you, a lot, you of people, a lot of people don't realize you can make a lot of money in World v. World. You can, you can actually clean up really well in World v. World. If you're, 
if you're defending and attacking and you actually have events that are going on, not, not killing people. People are often like, you know, they, they, it's kind of like the WoW mentality where the kill was the important part. Um, mm. In World v. World, the kill is not <clears throat> where you gain the most. The most gain is staying at a fort and defending it or staying at a fort and successfully uh, invading it. Uh, I say successfully because if you're sitting there and you get repelled, you're not going to get, you know, the karma or right, the gold the or anything. Loot. They get it. You're you're paying them for your time at that point. Yeah, but the killing is the thing when you're launching diseased cows at them and hitting a big group. Well, that that is fun. I'm not going to lie. When you have a, like a shit ton of bags around your uh, your treb, you just that <laughs> just makes you happy. So. <laughs> yeah, but that's when you want to be the one who built the treb because then you can kick the person off that yes. gets on it when you go collect all your loot. Exactly. Yeah, you have – see, that's the thing. You, you go to World v. World on one account and then you have your automatic Chinese bot on the other account farming ore for you, right? That's, isn't that how it yeah. works? Uh, yeah, yeah. Evidently, that's, that's why you have to buy two accounts. Oh, okay. Just checking. All right. Okay, so – we, that's pretty much a lot of the updates from the last podcast. Um, a little bit later, I'll be going over some news that I saw that's kind of related to gold making in the game. Because, like I said last time, you always want to be watching the news. You always want to be watching the patch notes. Um, whatever's on, like Reddit has been giving me a lot of good information lately. Um, the minute something goes live on Reddit as a need to have... You can guarantee yes. the price is either going – it's going to go up quickly and then it's going to drop fast because everyone yeah. is going there's for it. A, there's actually – the economy is acting more and more like uh, the stock market with like penny stocks right now because there's been a few people who will go stockpile something at like bottom prices, something nobody's picking up, say – cinnamon sticks or something that they can get thousands they got like tons and tons of stacks for like two copper and then they turn around and they make this post on reddit i'm making so much money with cinnamon sticks because i'm crafting them into this thing insider and trading then, <laughs> yes and then all of a sudden it jumps up to 10 copper and they dump 2,000 stacks and now all of a sudden they got an extra two gold or something like that that the math's probably not exactly correct on that but that's a brave move there's yeah it's there's actually a term for it in uh, stock trading. It's called pump and dump, where you you awesome. inflate the price. Yeah, yeah. It's not that's it not the most like, legal uh, thing to do. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't imagine. No, it's um, it's very very that's, illegal. It's not very but good. Guild Wars too. But it's, it's a, a game strategy. So have fun. <laughs> yeah. Manipulate people so that they buy the stuff that you have and don't want. Exactly. Um, that, and it's really one of the same things as the as the strategies you want to do yourself is if you see something's going to skyrocket, get, get in early and sell it to the people that are buying later. The only difference is you're the one making it skyrocket. Cause you know, it's, you know, worthless or, or maybe you've got a legitimate strategy that you're done working with and you want to give the idea to somebody else and you're just jumped in the rest of your stock. But well, I actually heard that. So last time I was, um, sorry, I'm, I'm, I heard, I heard no. this is just something I heard. Yes. The price of butter <laughs> it's crazy right now. Like you gotta get in there, man. You gotta sell your butter, and you gotta buy it, and you gotta buy it now. Like at crazy one gold per fucking piece, man. It's crazy. Butter is crazy right yeah, now. Yeah, no, no. What what you're supposed to be saying is, I found this secret recipe with butter that gives you epics, and <laughs> if you buy them up now. That we'll tell you later in the in the podcast how to turn those into epics and and then just sell them while we're podcasting. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Wait towards the end of the podcast when the price goes up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For those that yeah. don't know, my guild loves to send me butter. I have about eight stacks of two fifty butter right now sitting in my bags. <laughs> I don't know why. You know. I, I appreciate would, the I would mail. Just turn around and sell that. No, I don't want to sell it. It's like keepsakes, man. Every time I see it, I'm like, oh, that's Belial. Oh, that's Cali. Oh, it's so nice. I love them. People love me. Yeah, it makes I me feel good. I get presents. Butter boosts my oh, ego. There you go, then. Triage in game. You can send me butter. It boosts my ego. Yeah. 
and in two weeks, he's going to be, I just bought another bank slot so that I could store all my butter. I should. I should actually fill an entire bank slot with butter because I'm close. <laughs> uh, I'll oh take a screenshot. God. Yeah, that'll be good. Sorry, I'm, I'm right. derailing you today. We're good. Here we go. That's <clears> fine. That's fine. I got, I got four pages of notes, so we can... Uh, Oh, we're screwed. We got plenty to talk about. No we'll more fill derailing. The podcast, no problem. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one thing I started with last week was some general principles of making Golden Game. I got a couple more of those this week. Um, one of the things that really, really works in other games, it's a little bit harder in this game because crafting is such a slim profit margin, but it still works. Um, you don't only have to do this with crafting. You can do this with flipping. It's... You need to learn what players want for each class. So, like, mm. Guardians, who are more of a support class, are probably going to be in the middle of the, of the fights a lot. They're going to probably trying to be sending around boons. They're going to be sending around healing. They're going to be trying to tank a little bit more. Excuse me. So they're going to probably want more, or certain builds that might be popular would want more toughness or more healing. So you're going to want to craft and and target some items that they would want to sell. And you're not going to want so much, since they're not very great at getting in there and throwing a lot of conditions around, you're probably not going to want to make condition damage for them specifically. Um, like rangers and engineers have some traits that when they have high crit, it gives them a lot of bleeds. It makes them want to get high precision gear. So... If you're making medium armor, leather, then you might want to focus on some precision or condition damage gear so that you can hit the people, the, the widest group of people that will be buying that, and you can turn your, your items over quicker. You can buy a few, or you know if it's got leather with precision on it, then, hey, maybe that'll be a good deal, and I'll automatically want to sell that mm -hmm. in the trading post as opposed to just thinking oh it's all vendor stuff so you want to you want to watch out for what players are looking for um and then you also want to kind of pay attention especially in the early days we're getting i think the bell curve is getting to 80 right about now maybe last week this week and you're starting to get stragglers so you're getting more of the people that are getting to 80 thinking, okay, now that I'm there, I've got some money saved up. I'm earning more money per quest. I'm doing all that stuff. What can I spend it on? What can I do? So now you're looking more towards the people that are at 80 or maybe even people that are now rolling alts. So you want to go with the wave. You want to kind of see where the majority of people are concentrated and try to aim your, your selling to them. So right now, level 80 stuff is doing pretty decent because you've got more people there. Mm -hmm. um, it hasn't evened out yet. You're, you're going to still see some ups and downs with the markets. And when you do that, see that, that's where you can find some areas to be profitable and sell some stuff. Also, this game, this is the first game I personally have actually liked playing alts on. Normally, my yeah. alts are bank alts. I've, uh, I've got a warrior that I've actually leveled past 10, which is unusual for me. <laughs> uh, and I, when I get tired of either just sitting there staring at the trading post or trying to do stuff, I feel like I'm doing a job to farm for my legendary or something like that, I, I'm like, you know what? I'll go play on my on my warrior and actually do some leveling and have some fun on my warrior. And I'm actually taking a little slower this time and, and not just leveling quick. But I think this game is, is very conducive to people playing alts. The, my girlfriend's got four forties right now. She hasn't hit one, one level 80, but she's got almost all of her character slots. Well, the cool thing forties and she's loving it. The cool thing about the so, idea that alts are there is that you can make, um, a lot of money, off of an alt because you're getting the lower yep. level crafting items and those <clears throat> lower level crafting yes. items really really do yield a high return yes and and that's the the great thing about it too people are used to spending a certain amount and they think oh well 
two, three silver isn't that much for a piece of gear. I'm, I'm okay with spending that. My main has a lot, you know, has two gold, two silver is nothing. But then they're not looking at the fact that you have, you got all the materials to make that coat for 10 copper, 15 copper, and you're turning around and selling it for two silver. There are deals like that out there and alts are the ones that you're selling to. Yep. Um, so it's, it's really good to kind of try to keep an eye on where, where the player base is at so you can, you can market to them almost. Um, another general strategy is this game really, if you're going to make some gold at this point, you're really going to want to learn some patience. Things like buying at night or putting your buy in or, or your buy orders in at night so that you're, you're dealing with less people undercutting you and also it prices tend to fluctuate down a little bit at night and then turning around and selling during prime time which is anywhere between like 5 p.m. eastern all the way up until about 9 to 10 p.m. eastern because that's all the people coming home from work and putting in two hours they're going to start buying and prices are going to start going up um you if you can take the patience of buying at the off times and then turning around and holding on to that and then selling at the peak times, just like buy in the middle of the week, hold on to it till the weekend, sell Saturday afternoon. Saturday morning is great for selling crafting items and crafting materials because that's when people get up for their weekend, they log on, they want to get some of this crafting out of the way before they go do their world view world or their dungeons or whatever they want to do for that day. And they will, uh, get in there and on Saturday morning to Saturday evening is a great time to sell all the stuff that you bought for cheaper during the week. So patience is, is a big virtue in this. Well, I have up I right now, think if you, I have up right now, guild wars uh, We were looking at it last, yeah. last podcast and it's a great website where you can go to, to see, you can pull up, uh, I'm clicking here five days, um, one month, three months, um, and basically it'll tell you what days of the week. So for instance, Wednesday, October 3rd here, you can see the difference between the supply and the demand, and then that changes drastically on Sunday and on Saturday, and you can see it really dip right in that area, right around the Saturday, Sunday time, because so many more people are on. So there's a lot of places to take yeah. advantage of that. Yeah, and the websites like like what you have there, Guild Wars Trade, and also GW2Spidey.com, those are great. Um, Guild Wars Trade shows more of the actual prices. Guild Wars 2, GW2Spidey.com is got averaged numbers, so they average the number of the price over sometimes an hour, sometimes uh, um, a day. Yeah. And so it's not going to be completely accurate to what the prices are on the trading post at that exact time, but it's very, very good for showing you a trend. You can see where prices will spike on certain days and where they will, um, they'll, they'll dip. One of my long-term uh, suggestions, I don't suggest that you put a lot of money into this right now, just as you get a little bit of time, you should start, you know, grabbing a few here and there. Mystic Coins. I think Mystic Coins are going to be keep going up in price um, because you get them for doing your dailies, for completing uh, your – I think you can get them for completing areas sometimes. Yes. I know it's dailies and monthlies. Completing his own will and, also yield them, yeah. Yeah, and – What's happening is, as the majority of the first wave of people have gotten to 80 and they've, they have to now go out and try to get their dailies, because when you're leveling, it's easy to get your dailies and your monthlies. But when you're 80 and you're doing something else, it's not as easy. So I think the supply of Mystic Coins over the next month or two are going to start drying up and the demand is going to go up because that's when people are going to start getting towards the end of 
the casual players, not the power players, are going to get start getting towards the end of making their legendaries, and your legendaries are going to need a lot of Mystic Coins. So you're going to start seeing people need them, and you're going to see more people start to not bring them in and put them on the trading post. They're, they're used in more than just the legendaries. There's a lot of Mystic Forge recipes that use them, and I just think that right now a good long-term investment that if you buy a couple every day, it'll, it'll even out your, your daily cost averaging, and it will start going up and up, and then maybe in a month or two, you're going to see that Mystic Coins are worth an extra silver per over what you paid for them, and if you're not going to use them, you can dump them at that point. Um, now, there are some short-term strategies. I kind of talked about them on the last last time where you don't need the patience. It's just, hey, here's a deal, and we need to hit on it real quick. And I actually ran into one of these this weekend just on accident. I'm still doing loot bags. I'm still buying loot bags, opening them, and uh, selling the contents and making, still from just selling the contents, I'm making about 5 to 20 silver per st stack of 250 loot bags. And it's different ones. There's, uh, I found a lot of the stuff in the medium tiers, 2, 3, uh, 3, 4, 5 is uh, doing good. So you can use, a lot of times you can buy the bag and, and turn around and sell it, but you still got to, um, you got to, do your math. You got to do your your research on it. And make sure you're not losing money on it before you start buying in big bulk. Yeah, but I I'll, found that. Let me give an example here because someone brought yep. it up. They they said, "Well, can I sell insignias?" It seems people want them. I just pulled up an yes. insignia here on the website, and if you look, it costs you um, five silver and eighty three copper to make this insignia with all the all the ingredients. The sell price right now is four silver and 23 copper. You're gonna lose two silver and 23 copper on these. Insignias, while they do sound like, oh man, I just wish I had that, people, <clears throat> excuse me, people seem to be more inclined to make those things for themselves. So like Mike's saying, you really do need to do some research. You need to check this stuff out before you go and just gamble. I mean, other, I mean otherwise it is just a gamble. What we're trying to help you here with is actually making an informed decision on how to actually make a profit. Yeah. And what's funny is insignias is one of my things that I suggest you make for profit through crafting. It's that you have to find the ones that are profitable. And the GW2Spidey.com has a new crafting section on it. It's uh, If you go to the front page, it will Got have it. three columns. The, the one on the left is just regular trade items. So it's I want to try to buy this item. I want to see what the prices are at, whatever. If you go to the crafting side and click on one of, say, click on leatherworking, because that's what I usually do, because that's my first one that I got to 400. Mm -hmm. And you can click on any one of those items, and it will show you what it takes to craft each piece of that uh, recipe and whether you should buy the crafting materials or you should buy the item. So like if you need to buy, if you're if you're making a boot and you need to make a boot upper and a boot sole, it'll tell you if you should buy the boot upper or sole and it'll tell you if you should craft the boot upper or sole. Oh, wow, that's and then awesome. it'll also tell you the profits and all that stuff. It's it's very in depth. And if you uh, go back to the main page of Leatherworking where it has all the recipes, if you click on the profit tab or the profit title, twice it will it will sort all those by the most profitable so you click on it once and it tells you the least profitable and then it tells you what profit you should be getting now these profits are not exact on this website because it does the average of the prices but if you see something there that like there's a lot of satchels which are whole armor sets but you see that that's there, and it's the cost to buy the mats is within your price range, and you can see that it'll make you a gold, and you want to go ahead and try it. Go in there into the game and actually check the prices 
because the prices are going to be slightly different and you want to actually make sure that you're doing you, they haven't changed enough in the last however long that the average is is now skewed but that is a great spot gw2 spidey crafting is where you want to go to be pointed at a way to make money with your crafting yeah. that's that's one of the best spots and i've actually found that as you scroll down and you get past those satchels you'll see a lot of the stuff that says it's making a profit is components that you make as the crafter so boot uppers uh, sword hilts, bow staves, um, scepter, you know, handles, stuff like that. And I found, I played around with that a little bit this weekend, and I found that you can sell that stuff, you can't sell it in bulk, because if you put a bit, a large amount up on the trading post, people will undercut you a lot. But you can make around four or five of them of any one thing, and leave it up there for a day or save it till the weekend and those will actually make you some money. Uh, usually at a couple silver to, you know, anywhere to almost a gold each. I think, profit. I think the reason for that often is um, sometimes people don't have those crafting um, maxed out and so they can't make those but their friend right. does. And when you ask your friend, what do, I, what do you need to make that? The guy is gonna go to the recipe and he's gonna link everything that's in there. And people are not looking at, oh, that takes this much silk or that takes this much thing. They're looking at the name. Right. They're going to the trading post, typing in that name and going, okay, there's one here, got it. Yeah. And you know what, there's, it's also the crafters. The crafters are getting lazy because they're tired of, okay, I need to do 13 leather and four silk and I need to turn that into bolts and uh, squares and I need to then turn those into the upper and the boot. I just want the upper and the and the sole, so yep. that I can make my boot and do my discovery and get get on with my life. So yes, there's actually, if you if you spread yourself out and don't try to do it in bulk, you can probably start making just as much gold at that as you are with flipping the high volume stuff. Like, say you see a uh, a two copper difference between buy orders and sell orders on copper and you know that you can buy those as fast as you can type it in and you can sell them as fast as you can type it in so you're doing stacks and stacks and stacks at two copper profit per piece you know that's only five silver profit per stack of copper ore if you're doing that well in that in that same amount of time you can turn around and make a coat panel and make 20 silver as profit because people just want to buy the item so those that's actually where the profits and crafting are right now it's making the pieces for other crafters and making insignias by finding the ones that can be made for cheap mats price yeah so that's how that's how i made a majority of my money um is that i would look without unfortunately when i was doing it i didn't have these types of uh resources which are uh, amazing uh, to say the least uh if i had yeah, these i would i would have made a whole lot more money man like a whole lot more money but um i would just look on the trading post and i would see what was selling out of the things that i could craft and then i would then look at what the items it took to craft it were i would see what would it cost me to buy these crafted these craftable items to make the item and right. then how much profit would I make from the made item off of the stuff that I just bought? And I was literally just buying the mats, making the item, selling the item, and I was making uh, a bunch of gold at a time. So it, it, it definitely works. Um, but like, like Tig said, you can't, you definitely cannot put up more than one or two at a time. Because the minute you do that, man, people are like, no, no, he's, no, I'm going to undersell you. So, Yeah. They actually, the mentality is they see it as somebody who's trying to gouge prices when they see 15 or 20, especially when you try to sell it yourself, it says 15 items from one seller. And they say, screw that guy. I'm not going to match his price. I'm going to, I'm going to undercut him. And then someone else comes along and undercuts and undercuts. So it's, it's best for two reasons. The mentality of it, 
you don't want to put a lot up at once because people will vendetta, use a vendetta to undercut you. And the other thing is, if someone does come undercut you, you don't want to have 15 pieces sitting on the trading post not making you money. You want one or two. And then the other 13, you can post as an undercut for them and maybe sell that quickly. And that way you don't have all your money tied up sitting on the trading post waiting for prices to come back up. So it's definitely best to sell those types of things that don't move in a high volume in low amounts and just keep the rest in your bags because you can go do other stuff. And the trading post is always with you. The only thing you can't do is get your money back out of it unless you're right there. You can always just say, oh, it's been 15 minutes. I'm going to check how my sales are doing. I'm going to post another one because it either sold or got undercut. And I was doing that when I was using the blood sauce set that I mentioned last week. Oh, and uh, last week when I did mention the blood sauce set, you can find this on Spidey. You can see where the people that were watching the, the podcast live started going and selling stuff, and it and it brought the market down. You can see where it dipped just because I mentioned it on the podcast, and there was enough people to go use leatherworking. Now, a lot of them have come back up in price, and they'll probably dip again now that I said blood sauce sets are, are making some money. But... I think the podcast was on what the first, the second. So you might have to. Yep, I'm there. Pull that open one. Yeah, and then uh, like you can see it recover, but you'll see that with any tip that you see online. If you go to those blo gold blog sites that I mentioned last time, uh, GW2 Trading Post, I think it was TradingPost.com, something like that. Um, when they mention something to sell prices tank and really if you're ever getting a tip off the internet about what to sell in gw2 you want to check to see that it hasn't spiked or it hasn't dropped before you buy any it takes you two minutes at most and then you can see where the market's been trending at and you go to these sites uh speaking of the gold block sites one of the gold bloggers that uh, i mentioned has gotten a job in a different state and has decided that he's not going to be able to play Guild Wars very much anymore, and he's not posting the blog anymore, and he's selling the site or passing it on. Um, and he, so that's going to be pretty much down for a while until someone takes over it and uh, starts going. So there's, there's one of those gold blog spots is kind of died on us this week. Hmm. But, Cheer here, I'll pour yeah. out some of my drink for him. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Our fallen friend. Uh, while we're, while we're, so while we're was... bantering here yeah, for a second, ahead. the links, by the way, for those that are watching, they will all be available. Um, I know we're, we're throwing out a lot of links at you guys, a lot of different URLs. Uh, they'll all be available at alttabme.com after this podcast uh, is finished. And then on Wednesday, the podcast will be added to that thread. So all you have to do is go to the front page of alltabme.com and bam, you'll see all the links, all the summary notes from our show. So just wanted to throw that out there. And not only that, last week's podcast has a bunch of links that we talked about last week. And uh, I've mentioned a couple, like the gold blog sites are on there, GW2 Spidey's on there. Yeah. So you can go to alltabme.com right now. And I think it's the second post right now has the, the video for podcast one. Yes, it does. Actually click on that post and towards the bottom you'll see the links uh some of which i'll be references in, in this okay last week i was also talking about general principles of saving gold um a couple that i didn't get to was when you get to level 80 and you're looking for getting that magic find set or you're looking for getting that world view world set or whatever gear or weapons or whatever you're you're willing to spend money on now that you're top level you don't need to buy level 80 epics or even level 80 rares right now, especially if you're, fun, you're doing magic find. You can get level 78 rares, and you're only sacrificing about 3% in your main stat, be it damage or toughness or healing or whatever. It's, it's between 3 and 8% that you're sacrificing over the... the course of a whole set by going those two levels lower and you're saving yourself probably in the realm of five to eight gold whereas a level 78 set you can get for two to three gold 
a level 80 set like my Magic Find set when I first bought it. I wasn't even thinking about this. I found out about it later. I bought level 80 Magic Find gear. All that Magic Find gear has an innate 3% Magic Find on it, and then you put uh, runes and sigils and gems and whatever that have Magic Find on it, and those runes and sigils are the ones that give you most of your Magic Finds. Well, level 80 has 3% Magic Find, and level 78 has 3% Magic Find on the gear, but I paid 15 gold for it where I could have paid 5 gold for it. So look at slightly lower level gear, because in Guild Wars 2, it's not about the gear. It's more about skill, and it's your gear is not going to determine how hard you hit as much as it did in other games. In other games, you needed the best gear because a jump from level 78 to 80 was huge. You well, know, it's almost was, like, uh, I feel like gear in this game is all about damage mitigation versus making yeah. the actual damage happen. Yes, it'll help you boost your stats, but if you're good at dodging, if you're good at kiting, if you're good at um, you know using your cooldowns and defensive stuff, um, you can just dish out damage over time, and that damage over time will bring down what you need to bring down, and a higher level uh, set is not going to help you necessarily. Uh, you know, in the in the long run, it might you might kill stuff faster, but you're not going to get any. It's going to be the same conclusion. You're going to kill it. It's just yep. going to take a little bit more mitigation with a lower level set. That's it. <laughs> right, and especially when you're dealing with magic fine gear, because magic fine gear, you're going to be concentrating a lot on farming dynamic events usually because in magic find a lot of it has to do with killing a mob and the only thing you need to get loot from a mob is you need to do some damage to it so when you're doing a dynamic event with a lot of mobs around what you want to do is you want to hit a lot of them at least once so you don't have to kill that thing yourself so you don't need the highest level gear you just need something with magic find on it and level 78 has got the same amount of magic find as level 80 does so that's a good way to save money, especially if you're a fresh 80. Broken mechanic. Um, Broken mechanic. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> There's another no podcast. You can guys go back to the podcast, I think, 13. We talked about tagging and the bullshit yeah. I think it is, but it's okay. Go ahead. Yeah, where where we get all the hate from uh, all the hate mail. Oh, God. From you guys hate Guild Wars, Wars too. Wars we too. like it. Fuck off. Yeah. I hate you. Uh, the other thing with gear is you don't have to pay gold for gear. You can pay karma. You can uh, pay dungeon tokens. You should be able to get the gear you want from a bunch of different areas. Now, magic find gear, it's kind of hard to find it with other, other currencies. But if you want it for World of Your World or you want it for uh, whatever reason you want it for, PvE, because you want to go back and do 100% on, the, on all the areas and you want to get that explorer title or if there is even a title but the achievement um you can get it for karma so get gear and weapons where the game is fun for you and because of that you can also be saving money doing it that way well yeah i mean i just make girl um, characters because I, I like to look yeah you know i i, I just like free shit so <laughs> you're looking for all the under boob so if you're good goats. at sexting uh, girl character, uh, a voice changer if they force you to get on Mumble or Ventrilo or TeamSpeak. Yeah. Um, other than that, you could always pull the, well, I broke my microphone. Um, lots of smileys and, uh, some pictures off of someone's random Facebook that you know. Done. Make yeah. sure they're not too hot though, because they won't believe you. Make sure it's like somewhere middle ground, you know, pretty but maybe like has a weird mole or something, you know, look at your demographic too. Is it a big ass? Is it a small? All right. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> you know, sometimes I just think, I think you want people to stalk you. I think <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you devise all these ways for people to just be more involved in your life. Just random <laughs> people. But Hey, that works. I just looked down at my notes, and I realized that I started talking about short-term strategies and one of the ones that made me money this weekend, and I didn't even talk about it. Well, talk about it, man. Let's do it. I was it. looking – yeah, I was, uh, I was doing loot bags, and I got some rugged leather out of them. And so just on a whim, I checked to see – because you get rugged leather sections 
or leather sections out of the loot bags. It happened to be rugged. I checked to see how much they were worth if I turned them into squares because that's just me clicking a button at, at the leather working station. And it turns out that the sections were selling for 10 copper each, and you need two of them, so 20 copper to make a rugged leather square. But the rugged leather squares were selling for 39 copper each. After the 15% cut from the auction house, uh, trading post, it was 33 copper back to me by selling it as a square. So that was 13 copper as profit per square that I had. So I turned around and I stopped what I was doing and I went and I bought as many uh, rugged leather sections as I could and turned them straight into squares and sold them as quick as possible. And I was just doing that until people started undercutting me. And I mean, I was just adding to the 5,000 squares that were already up there for 39. I think I put them at 38 just so that mine would sell really quickly because I knew the price was going to come down. It was, there was a definite imbalance there. But the point was when you see imbalances like that and you know, you've been watching and you know that market enough to know that that stuff is going to sell, you want to jump on it as quick as you can. And then you got to know that you got to be able to get out of it really quickly too, because once that thing, once people start catching on and they did within about 30 minutes, I think I made a total of three gold off that in about 30 minutes. Um, once they start catching on, it's going to tank quick and your profit margin is going to go away and you got to be willing to stop. You know, you got to pull the trigger on, on starting it and you got to pull the trigger on stopping it because otherwise you'll start losing profits. What I ended up having to do was once it started going down to about the 35 copper range, I pulled all the, I pulled all the, I didn't want to interrupt you. Go ahead. Come on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was so much innuendo in your endo. There's so much. I couldn't, Oh, that's what she said. All right, go ahead. <laughs> Okay, got it out of your system, feeling good, you're ready to go. So, yeah, I pulled it all off, I sold it at a little bit of a loss for what I could have made, but I got rid of it all and ended up making a decent profit on it. So there's there's long-term strategies where you gotta have patience, but on the short-term strategies, you gotta be willing to, to pull that trigger right away and, and know when to stop it too. Um, <laughs> Everything's sexual to me right now. <laughs> Every everything is just <coughs> triggering your brain there. And then <coughs> fucking hung daddy comes into our channel, so I'm just cracking up right now. <laughs> you're just you're just seeing it everywhere. Ooh. You're ready for it. It's that it's that day quote, um, man. It makes me a little loopy. Sorry. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Um. Okay. Go to Spidey and pull yep. up pumpkins. There okay. is. Oh yeah. I was, we were talking about it a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. There, When we talk about people that get on a website and say, oh, this is going to make money and um, the prices inflate like crazy. Well, there was a rumor earlier this week. Um, I think it's called Sweet Pumpkin. It's a, it's a gathering material that you use in cooking. And um, someone got on and said that, I think it's like halfway down on the list, I'm not, that, see, I'm not seeing a sugar pumpkin. Sugar pumpkin, that's the mm, one. Okay, sounds delicious. And someone got on and said Halloween's coming. Arena Net's going to put in recipes and stuff that you can use to Holy that crap. you can uh, make stuff, and you can see exactly when that person posted by that graph. Yeah. Because people are like, "Oh crap, I need to go buy pumpkins," and. There's speculation that the guy that posted went through and bought, you know, 15, 20 stacks of the stuff and then half a day later sold them at, what is it, like five times the price of what it was, something yeah, like that. Yeah, it's, it's up there, man. But even with that, you can see that people are still speculating on pumpkins. And uh, another thing is orange, unidentified orange dye has been getting speculated on this week because people are doing... Uh, Halloween colors. With the pumpkins, I don't suggest anybody goes out and buys them off the trading post right now, but there are farming locations where you can get 
there's a farm of sweet uh, sugar pumpkins. And if you're in the area or if you were going to go to that area, you should definitely pick those up and farm any of them that you're going to have in your area and sell them on the trading post because their prices are inflated. And yeah. you want to do it before all those Halloween, whatever the arena nut does for Halloween, you want to do it before they do it. You want to, <laughs> yeah, that's clear. Do it before they do, <laughs> do it. it. Do it Do it. over there on that place in that time. Yes. It's you like heard it here first, alttabme.com slash live. That one guy says do it over there on that one place yeah. before they do the other thing. Hey, but you know what? Just just so you know, pumpkins, you know, you go gather pumpkins, you can make it a guild event. It's very festive, you know? Bring a little hayride, everybody dresses up in their town clothes, scamper through the, you know, the corn stalks. Maybe someone pretends that they're a ghost, they're a char, and they jump out and they scare you and you could have a good little fun, you know, Halloween event there. Yeah, there you go. Um, so yeah, there are there. There's a lot of speculation right now on what Arena Net's going to do with uh, Halloween. Some people have been saying that they're not going to do anything that would make you profit because they didn't in Guild Wars One, but they didn't have the Mystic Forge in Guild Wars One, and and other people are thinking that there's going to be Halloween related things that you can throw in there and get special items or or whatever. So there's speculation out there. Like I said, make sure you check Guild Wars 2 Spidey before you go buy that stuff because if you would have bought it 2 hours into that event or that that speculation, then you would have been buying it at the high price and now you're sitting on items that you bought for 5 silver and they're only worth 2 or whatever the prices were. Yep. Um but the flip side of that is you can go in there and be Mr. Evil Speculator and you can buy all the pumpkins that you can find at two silver and turn around and say, I heard Arena Net's going to do this with pumpkins for Halloween and then wait two hours and sell them all back at five silver each or whatever the prices were. I didn't uh, well, no, I actually I heard, don't remember exactly. I heard that Arena Net was doing um, Butter Ghosts. So there's going to be yes. a recipe for it's going to you need one sheet and 250 stacks of uh, full stacks of butter of butter and I am almost positive and it gives you a mini pet yeah it gives you it no not just a mini pet but you know how like there's an orange for epic like epic epic like exotic yeah. right no this is like a special color of orange exotic because of Halloween yeah, so you get like a crazy is pet purple is legendary. That's funny. A legend, a, le a legendary. No, it's like a mixture of the orange ghost. and purple. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Butter. <laughs> yes, butter. But the thing is, you got to remember to actually go on and sell the butter to all the people that are speculating. You don't want to sell once it, that. Once the. <laughs> okay. Um, on. One thing I didn't talk about last week. And it's a very legitimate or illegitimate way to make gold, depending on where you're getting it from, is there is a way to turn actual real-life money into gold in this game, and that's with the cash shop. Uh, in fact, GW2 Spidey, if you go to the main page, mm -hmm. shows you gem conversions. You can buy gems for real money through your pay PayPal account, through a credit card, whatever, and then turn around and sell those gems to other players through the gem store for gold. So you put money in, you get gems, you put the gems back in, and you get gold. Now, if you just go straight like that from one minute to the next, you buy the gems and then turn around and sell the gems, you're going to lose, you lose gold because the conversion isn't even. The no. reason they do that is so that people can't just turn gold into gems, turn the gems into gold, and make more gold than they had to start with. Arena does a, doesn't want that. And if you notice, over the last couple of weeks with this graph right here, the gem prices have been going up, which means you're getting less gems per gold r right now, and it has been going that way. This is why I bought um, a ton of gems when the game first came out. A ton. When the, when the game first came out? People didn't have any gold, so what they did was they bought gems and turned it into gold so they'd have startup cash in-game. Yep. The other thing was 
there was a good portion of the of the people that couldn't access the trading post at all. Then when that came up, they couldn't access the gem parts. They couldn't buy the gems through the transaction. There was a lot of reasons why the gems were not being sold for real money for a long time. And once that got fixed, the gems tanked. For a while there, gems were going up to the point where one gold was getting you, like, I think it topped out at, like, 415 gems for one gold at one point. And... I think you bought in the 300, 350 range, right? Um, no, I bought in the uh, four, I think 490, 520 range. I, I got in really early. Yeah. I bought about, yeah. I, I remember I spent three gold and I got 2,400 gems. Jeez. Yep. Wow. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't get anywhere near that, and I ended up spending all my gems on various things. So I'm down with all the people that didn't buy any ever at this point because if i need more gems i'm paying the, the bottom prices but buying them at four, 500 gems per gold turned it into something like 18 I, to 19 silver per gem i think i can make and right now i think i can make right now uh i, I believe uh, without looking at it i believe it's about two gold and 50 silver profit i think that's what it comes out to with, yeah. with the weird yeah, you've conversion got that they do. Yeah, you're in the profit margin right now easily. So yeah. if you bought early and the prices went up, then it was good. But that's the only legitimate way to turn real money into gold. But ArenaNet has it sanctioned that you can do that. You can buy gems and turn it into gold if you want. And if you need that startup cash or if you're just – you, you're fine with that. Because with the game – you're not paying a monthly fee like other MMOs. You could easily justify that as I'm going to spend $15 a month and it's going to be like my subscription someplace else and I'm going to have all the gems I need and I can turn that into gold or I can turn that into outfits like your crazy superhero outfit that makes me look like Tron when I put it on my character. I look so slutty. I look so, <laughs> oh like, I look so slutty. I look like Tron. And you look like what is it, Dominatrix Catwoman? I do, I do. I, I'm I'm pulling it up right now so people can see how slutty I look. It's amazing, man. It's like Yeah, and that's an outfit that you bought for gems. <clears throat> yes, it was so, it was easy. It was like uh five hundred gems. Yeah. But that leads us into the illegal ways to make to buy gold. And that's through all the gold sellers and the and the the botters and whatever that you see. Yeah. Very red today. Oh, yeah, it's red. I, I Sometimes I make it black to go for the leathery look, you know? Sometimes I make it pure white to go for that, like, I'm innocent, but I got tons of straps, and it looks like I'm going to, like, step on your balls kind of thing, you know? <laughs> it's, it's, you know? The nice dominatrix. Yeah. Oh, hey, yeah. I just noticed, noticed that shoulder do... pads are off. Well, yeah, it's because you don't like those shoulder pads. No, but I don't. Uh, all... Usually they show up in the screen. They fix that. Just That's just recent. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's something cool to Ooh, note. That's nice. Yeah, they talk. So if you had, uh, if you toggle your shoulder pads off in game, it doesn't show up here anymore, which is nice. Yeah. Sorry, completely off topic, um, and and I need to turn this off before everybody starts fapping. So. <laughs> yeah. So, the, I'm sure everybody who's been in game for five minutes has seen people spamming gold selling. There's botters out there earning whatever they're earning, whether it's gold or karma or whatever. There are gold selling sites out there that you can, just like any other MMO or any other game pretty much right now, you can buy gold illegally, but it's really not worth it. In other games, it might have been because you could get, it was sometimes it was the only way to get gold for money. Excuse me. And uh, in, in other games that, like even in Diablo 3, where you could spend real money in the game and, you know, turn it into gold through various means. The In this game, it's actually a better conversion rate if you buy it through the gem store most times. And that's really hurting the, the gold sellers, I think. I think yeah. that's going to help with, that's going to be the number one thing that helps get rid of these botters that we're running into. But 
And they've been addressing the they've been addressing is, the botters. Um, we, we we bitched about it on one of our podcasts for a good yes. amount of time. We we really we were very upset with the fact that literally when you logged in the game, you had emails, you had you couldn't see map chat. It was getting really bad. I mean, it's it's still not a hundred percent fixed. Worse. It's 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 not it's not much better, but they're looking at it and they're trying to solve it. And right now, unfortunately. My opinion is that it's it's hurting the fixes. The hot fixes are hurting the people that are trying to. And since this is about making money, this is what our podcast is today. It's hurting the people that are trying yeah. to make money because uh, people that like to grind and like to do that kind of stuff um, because of diminishing returns that they turned on to really stop the botters from being able to just run a program and go. Um, players that right. are normally playing the game. Uh, are getting extreme diminished returns to the point of no profit. So, yeah, the people are calling it the anti-botting code because after a half hour of killing the same type of mob, so especially level 80s go to ore, and all there is in ore is pretty much undead. So once you're killing about half an hour's worth of undead, and that's easy to do if you're following dynamic events around. All of a sudden, you're getting less loot, you're getting less karma, you're getting less experience, and it's not all of a sudden that you got zero, but you can see it get less and less. Yeah. And they did tone it back a little bit Which on this I patch this last night. Up here, yeah. Yeah. And what some of the people are reporting is when they were hit with that anti botting code, they were getting nine karma from a dynamic event when before they were getting 381 karma. So it dropped them all the way down to nine karma after they killed so many mobs. Now they're reporting that it's it's about 141 is where the bottom is, where they, if they keep killing, that's all they're getting. And it's, it's great that they're doing this, but it's bad that it's impacting actual players because they need ArenaNet needs to do something to make it not profitable for those botters to be there because it's so annoying to sit there and have to listen to a ranger shooting that stupid short bow. And I'm a ranger and I don't want to hear it constantly for three hours or however long you're sitting there. Just there's no mobs in the area, but pachoo, 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 just yeah. over and over and over again. The botters are and, the same. Yeah, the botters are, are crazy. And then you see them running around in circles, and it looks like ArenaNet's not doing anything, but the people that have been in Guild Wars 1 have documented that they've seen the way that ArenaNet deals with this. And what they do is they try to find some way to impact the botters while they're getting information on them. They're tracking them, and they're following them, and they're, they're following up on every time you report, so make sure you report every single one that you see because they are following up on it. But what they're doing is they're not going to eliminate them one by one because that shows the botters which scripts are working and which ones are not. Yeah. They're going to go through, and they're going to do a mass ban. But the other thing they're doing is they're tracking who they send mail to with, with money in it. They're, set, they're tracking who they talk to and who responds back to them to see if those legitimate players that are interacting with them are doing things that are against the terms of service. And those people also are going to get, if not permabans, they're going to get, you know, temporary bans. They're going to get actions against their account for buying the stuff and supporting it because that's what they've done in the past. And that's another reason why you don't want to use these gold selling sites because you're now going to be on the list. Big Brother is watching. And <laughs> you're going to get, you know, at least you're going to get action against you if you're, if you're doing this and you're supporting this. Yeah, I mean, so if, if you're... Definitely keep reporting. If you're curious yeah. about, if you're, if you're curious about what, what, what do I care, I'm here to learn how to make money. Botting is one of those things that can take an economy of a game and absolutely tank it. Because while you're putting in the effort to sell the mats, to get the mats, to get the epics, to get the exotics. These guys are sitting at home sleeping, running scripts that make these characters run over and over again. And they're putting these things up on the trading post. They're putting it, they're, they're not just selling gold because they have to make the gold. And in this game, you're not going to make all your money just by killing monsters. That's not the way to make all your money. 
it's to actually use the trading post and the botters are actually using the trading post and so that's affecting your income um, someone mentioned and I just want to I want to make sure that this is clear they did update the um, they did update the system so that it's not as harsh. Tig told you what the difference is in, in karma as what it opposed to what it used to be. But I just want to make sure if you look up at the post I have right now, that's the, uh, that's the post from John Peters posting an update. Um, he also says, though, that uh, they need to figure out more about it before they can do anything about it. So anyway, right. <clears throat> I don't want to I don't want to I don't want to linger on this too much. People are here to learn how to make money. So let's let's teach them how right. to make some more money. So, and related to botting, a lot of a lot of what people are doing is grinding and farming. So, let's let's get into that. It's the first question I always have when farming, because I hate farming. I hate the same repetitive over and over again. Do one thing and just mindlessly do it without paying attention. I hate it. But is it worth it in Guild Wars 2? That's, that's always my question. Because if it's going to make me a lot more gold per hour, then I'm not going to sit at the trading post. I'm going to go farm, and <clears throat> you know something that I could do in an hour will save me from having to be on the trading post for three hours or whatever, if, if that's what it is. And right now, because they, fix, they set up the economy so well, farming is actually worth it if you find the right things to farm and you have a good plan. So... There's a couple different ways to farm. You can go out and you can gather nodes that are profitable. So ore, leather, cloth. Um, if you want to farm leather and cloth, you need to go kill humanoid mobs because they drop the loot bags on top of humans drop cloth, centaurs drop leather, they both drop loot bags, and in those loot bags you have a chance of getting leather and cloth. If you want to farm crafting uh what do you call it, uh, cooking materials. You go out with your sickle and you go hit all those gathering nodes. If you need wood or wood is selling, you go farm uh, the trees. You go chop down trees. That's one way to farm. Another way is uh, the rare, rare crafting materials. So your bone chips and your venom sacks and your... Um, scales and claws i see you're you're pulling up that uh i found a good map that shows you all the nodes for gathering it's got your ore it's got your cloth it's got your leather it's got areas to farm these fine crafting materials like claws and scales and stuff and for those you're going to go have to kill specific mobs things that normally have scales like dragons and fish drop scales things that have Claws will drop claws like uh, like eagles and things like that. Um, there's different areas that and different mobs that will drop specific items. And this website is is a great spot if you're looking for something specific. You can go on there and zoom in and find <clears throat> the ones that you want. Or if you know you're going to an area, you can say, okay, what's around here? Should I gather these? And so there's that. And then finally, the third way of farming is by going out and doing dynamic events and farming for actual loot drops, like uh, your, your rares. Ore is the perfect example where you get rare level 70 and above weapons and armor and turn those into ectoplasms through either selling them yourself and buying the ectoplasms other people salvage or salvaging the items yourself. And that's where you're going to run into the diminishing returns and the anti-botting code. But in, in ore, all three zones of ore is where you're going to want to, you're going to want to grind on mobs by killing. And yeah, that's going to make you money too because you're going to have blue and green items drop. You're going to have money drop. Um, that's where you want to wear your magic find and eat your magic find food, especially the Om Nom Berry bars that give you a bonus to your gold, the drops. You want to use your boosters for magic find and karma and experience because karma turns into 
gear for yourself. Experience turns into skill points that you can then turn into items that you put in the Mystic Forge to make items that you sell. And so you want to be using those boosters. You want to be using the food. You want to be using your magic find. Um, there's a legendary guide on how the guy that made the first Juggernaut, a uh, legendary mace, made it, and tips and tricks on how you can do all your farming and all that stuff. It's on the front page of gw2guru.com. It's one of the posts that bumped our last podcast down down the screen. <laughs> and he has he has a video and a couple mat, uh, maps that show where he farmed in... <clears throat> uh, what's the third place of ore called? The one... Oh, Curse man. Shore? Yeah. No. Um, it might be. Yeah. I think so, yeah, because Blood Tide Coast is the only other one that I can remember that sounds like a piratey thing. So Yeah, yeah it's, it's Malcor's Lee, Blood Tide Coast, and the Curse Shore. So the Curse Shore is where he did most of his karma and uh, really gold farming. He said he made Curse over the course of the time that it took him to do the... Uh, it's down more. It's the legendary guide by Unbeatable or something like that. He puts in a video, he puts in a map, and... Well... Maybe it was above the patch there notes. I guess maybe they dropped it. it off there. Yeah. Um, and it shows you a bunch of the dynamic events he goes through and how he did it. He talks about tagging lots of mobs and stuff like that. And that's... I touched on it earlier. For farming mobs, what you want to do is you want to find dynamic events that have a lot of people fighting and a lot of people killing, and you want to go in there and use your best AoE and your best multiple mob uh, skills that will hit many, many mobs at once. No, that's not it. That's the arena net thing that shows what legendaries look like. Well, at least it shows and, legendaries. Stop bagging on me, right. man. I'm trying my best here. <laughs> yeah, they might have. They might have moved it, but it, I know. I know. I have the sunrise the one on the on at least our website. So yes. And that's that's actually him with his legendary there, but I'll uh, I'll make sure we got the link for his legendary guide so you can see the maps and the videos of where to farm in the cursed shore for and he explains how to do it. But what you want to do is you want to find the skills that give you AOE as best possible, especially in the cursed shore when you're doing there's there's the two famous penny and waypoint and the one down below it where there's two camps and they're connected by a tunnel and there's events that spawn on each one and what it is is just waves and waves of mobs come at you and you want to tag as many as possible but you've got you know 20 30 people there on every server so you've got to hit them all quick because if you tag them you have a chance of getting loot from them so find the the shelter, I guess it's shelter waypoint is the other waypoint. Thanks for that in the chat. And find what you have, what skills you have, what weapons you have. Even if it's not the normal weapon you use, find out which one will hit three mobs or which one will do a ground area of effect and which one will um, get in there and tag as many mobs. You want to see a bunch of numbers coming up so you can get as much loot as possible. What he did was he goes through and he tags us a bunch enough to get that gold medal for the dynamic event, and then he leaves because the dynamic event still is going on, and he finds another one and tags a bunch of mobs in that. So he's got a couple of dynamic events working in his system for him, and he's getting them all at the same time. So AOE is key for farming mobs. Um, Broken. Magic find is key because <laughs> Sorry. magic find, what it does... What? I said nothing. Nothing. Go ahead. I'm oh, just okay. I'm just bitching about the whole tagging and blah 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 thing. Yeah. But Magic Find, what it does, it doesn't give you a chance to get more items. It gives you a chance for those items to be better items. So if it was normally going to be a blue, you've got a better chance of that being a green or green to yellow, and it really does make a difference because where you're going to make a lot of that money is doing 
getting those yellows and selling them or salvaging them for ectos and then turning around and selling that. And like I said before, you don't have to worry about gimping your your damage output by getting a lesser level item, so you 78 instead of 80, because with magic finds, you're going to be doing things that a lot of people are helping you kill with. So it doesn't matter that you're sacrificing a stat for magic find because you want to be just tagging as many as possible. Another thing that a lot of people are saying, and it's not been proven, it's not been uh, spoken about by ArenaNet, but a lot of people believe that if you're in a party, you're going to have better drops. They feel that they see better drops or more drops from the mobs if you're in a party. I don't know if that's true or not. I'm skeptical about it, but there are other benefits to being in a party. If you're doing dynamic events and or, you want to be in a party because you can spread out more and people say, oh, this event over here started and this event over here started or we're almost done, don't come over here. And you can see where people are out on your map. And not only that, you can write on your map. If you hold down shift, you can draw, you can ping, and the other people in your party can see it. And so it's a lot easier to find and get to events that um, if you're in a party. And not only that, if you're in a party with all your guildies, you're getting more influence for the guild for everything that any, any event that you complete. It's it's multiplied that way. Yep, we are um, we are very we are very uh, that helps us so much. We've maxed out everything because majority of our guild members yeah. will run in parties, and we were able to max out our entire influence chain quickly because of that. And not only that, you know, there's benefits to that too because. If you've got leaders and officers that are on the ball, they'll keep those magic find buffs up or put them up when everybody's playing on the weekend. They'll put those gold find buffs up and extra toughness buffs up so that you're actually getting benefits from being in a guild that does things together in more ways than just having fun together. That's great that ArenaNet put those types of things in. Um, the other thing you want to do when you're when you're farming, especially if you're farming mobs, you want to have a plan before you go. You want to make sure your bags are empty because you're going to get a lot of drops and you don't want to have to stop as many times. You want to do as much as possible. You want to make sure you're going to an area that ha is specific for what you want to get. If you need crafting materials in Tier 2 and... You don't like trying to play the auction house. You want to go farm those materials. Make sure that you know where they're at or where there's a higher concentration of them, and you're going there and you're not wasting time running around. Um, know that if you're going to go to an area to clear it, say that today I want to get towards my explorer achievement and I want to clear this zone 100% and get the, the stuff from that zone, if you go out there and you look at that map that shows all the crafting, the drop nodes, the gathering nodes, all that, then you'll know, okay, there's vials of powerful blood and huge venom sacks over here. Well, huge venom sacks only sell for three copper, but vials of powerful blood, those sell for two silver each. I'm going to make sure that when I get to this area, I'm killing everything in this area that has vials of powerful blood. And I'm not going to worry about killing the stuff in that's got the venom sacks. And besides, spiders are icky. So I'm going to stay away from that area. Don't try so to take my ammo. Don't try to take my ammo. No. no. Pink is my thing, okay? I, I said it for you because I don't have a problem with spiders. <laughs> spiders are fine. The girlfriend? Deathly afraid of spiders, but... See, it's the opposite Not for me. me. My girlfriends, they kill the spiders for me as I scream like a little girl on the couch. That's kind of how it rolls. Yeah. I think I could have guessed that about you. This website, but, by the way, is the laggiest piece of shit I have ever fucking it used. It is so slow. There's so much stuff. And then when you try to zoom in, but it's the only place I've found that actually shows where those nodes are. Now, the gathering nodes will respawn after a certain amount of time a lot of times it's 24 hours and it seems that the maps have like three or four different 
maps of gathering nodes on them. Like, one day the gathering node will spawn in this place, but the next day it won't spawn in that place. It'll spawn in another place. So you kind of got to check them all. It's not going to always have the same same spots, but they seem to have put together a map that has everything. So if you're going there, I usually use it more to say, okay, I'm going to this area. What's there? And what should I get when I'm there? Um, there were people farming the dungeons, and it was a little bit more for for the dungeon badges or whatever you want to call them, but there were people speed clearing and making gold that way. That's kind of not really working anymore. Just like the anti-botting code, they put in an anti-speed clearing code for the dungeons, which if you... Um, if you speed clear, if you words. clear it more than what's that? Use your words. Yes, yeah, I was I was losing it there. If you clear a, a single path of a dungeon more than twice in an hour, it will give you less badges and less loot. So they want you to go clear other areas and do. Um, not the same thing over and over again. Hi, hon. And so that's in there, too. Speed clearing of dungeons isn't all that great anymore. Um, but ArenaNet is really keeping up on it, listening to players, making sure that they're fixing things in and keeping track of it, just like the anti-botting code, where they're, they're not just throwing a Band-Aid on it. They're, they're doing that, and then they're going to fix it so that the exploits and the reasons that they don't like things are being done are fixed, and then they'll take the anti-botting code and the, and the speed clearing code away so that if you find a legitimate way to, to do this more than a couple times an hour, you will... <laughs> hi, Tig's wife! Hi! Everybody hi, hi. say hi! Everybody say hi. She just talked <clears throat> to me. She said hi back. Um, so... There will be ways to get through the dungeons quick again. It's just right now there's no way to do it and be profitable with it. So it's do dungeons for fun. Don't do it for profit right now. And uh, that's kind of it on the farming. The farming is it's go out there and do it, you know, find what you like to do and you can make money playing this game with what you like to do which is good and i think i think that's something that a lot of people bring up um new recruits and stuff like that that apply to the guild they're often asking us what is the best build what is the best way to play what is the best way to make money what is the best way to prepare for end game and the same thing that we say to them every time and it has to do with making money too and i hope that that comes across here is that the best way to do something is the way that makes you happy because you're not going to make an excessive amount of money if you're really pissed off doing it if you're not enjoying it if you're not getting into it like going to the website and checking out the little tiny small things that's not for me I'm not gonna check out the you know the 15 percent I'm gonna do that in my head and just kinda guess and I'm gonna go look at that and I'm gonna buy the stuff and I'm gonna make a little bit of profit and I'm gonna look at my uh, you know, my final tally and I'm gonna go, oh, I lost 20 silver. Oh, oh, I got a gold. <laughs> and to me, that's cool. Um, but if you wanna, you know, if you wanna get really into it, we're giving you ways to do that. And uh, I think it should be, you know, it should be noted. Do what you're happy with. Do, play the game that you wanna play and uh, enjoy it. And that's, that's what Guild Wars 2 is really all about. Well, I love ArenaNet for doing it that way. I love that they made it so that you can do whatever you want and still make the money that will benefit you you know for for doing what you want you mm -hmm. can you can level so many different ways you can get gold so many different ways and really gold in any game is just a means to an end you get it because you want the gear or you want the weapons or you want that you know pet or that die or whatever and I love that they made it so that you can do it in so many different ways and not feel like you're 
losing out or have to do it one way to be profitable. But now I talked last week about following the news, following blogs, following patch notes, following arena, arena nets, official posts on the forums. Um, and there has been some, some news come out this last week. We talked about a little bit of it, like the orange dyes and the pumpkins when people are, are speculating about stuff. Um, one of the things ArenaNet did was they found out some people were making legendary precursors with a recipe that they didn't want it made as. They were using level 70 to 73 rare uh, items, and it was mostly with the great swords and the daggers. And so you were getting dusk and twilight uh, precursors or sunrise and twilight precursors. One of them was named Dusk. I forget what the other one was. Or maybe it's they're both the same. And they would use two level 70 crafted great swords and two level 80 crafted great swords. And they could make those for like three gold and then turn around and get a Dusk every single time or a higher percentage of the time. And then turn around and sell that for 29 gold, 30 gold. Yeah. Well, ArenaNet found that, and they closed that loophole, and now all of a sudden there's very little in the way of those precursors on the auction house. The price is going up. Demand is way down. Price is going up. The other thing is that October 1 patch that happened after, right after our last podcast fixed some bugs that wouldn't let people make their legendaries. There were people that were holding on to all the mats for the legendaries for a week and a half, like the guy who made the Bifrost, the the staff, he had his mats and it had it documented. He was ready to go, but some of them were bugged and he couldn't put it together. So now all of a sudden last week when that patch happened, you got five or six legendaries made in that first day. And now all of a sudden people are seeing the legendaries are there so the prices of the precursors are going way up. Items that were 29 gold are now like 150 gold. The, the items for uh, making the precursors, because ArenaNet came out and said there's only two ways that you can make precursors now, or always has been, that either combine them in the Mystic Forge, combine items to try to get that epic precursor, so level 70 to 80 rares or epics, you put four of the same type in. If you want a great sword, you put four great swords in. And you have a chance of getting the either a regular epic, another rare, or the precursor epic. And that's one way to get it. The other way is random drops from the world and more likely in dungeons. So there is a low supply of those precursors. And on top of that, people found out that you need to use the Mystic Forge to make them in the, you know, that's the really kind of the best way to get them. And so now all of a sudden the prices of these epics and rares are going up, which is good if you're farming because you can turn around yep. and sell them on your prices are going up for the stuff that you're selling. But if you're trying to buy stuff from the auction house, uh, trading post, turn it around, put it in the Mystic Forge and turn it into the, uh, the higher level, the precursors, now all of a sudden it's getting harder. So you're seeing pr prices and stuff go up from that just because all of a sudden people are getting the news that this is working. Um, the patch, in o the October 1 patch, when it took away all that stuff from the Karma, uh, the Weaponsmith was not selling stuff for Karma anymore. It was selling it for uh, silver. Now all of a sudden you've got people that are having to pay silver and copper and you got to change your thinking the salvage kits aren't anywhere for silver from what i can find but there are different areas that you can get the mining the gathering tools for ca for karma but a lot of times if you're going to port to that area it's going to cost you two or three silver and then the item would have normally cost um four silver on the guy in the first place, so you're not really saving that much. So there's ways around to get it, and I think I'm gonna—I ha have a karma vendor list 
on the uh, links that if you're looking for something specific or if you're looking for whoever's in the area, you can you can get on that. Um, we talked about how the GW2 Spidey has the crafting profits in there now. Take a look at that for looking at what you want to craft because if you're leveling crafting or if you've even got it leveled, you can now find ways or you when you get to certain levels that you can find something that's profitable. So something that uh, if you want to level your crafting and it would have normally cost you four to four to eight gold to do zero to 400, now you can do it and make some of that gold back or even sometimes turn a profit. Um, the other thing, tpcalc.com, the one that tells you your your trading post cuts if you if you don't want to do the math yourself that now has uh, items if you type the item name in it it will give you a pricing graph like Guild Wars trade or um, Spidey does you just got to type the name in and then you click on it and it'll give you a graph at the bottom um, the other thing that, that has been coming up this week, and you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna find it in um, you're not gonna really find it in patch notes, but you're gonna find it in like Reddit, is that the trading post prices are not accurate on the front page when you type in an item. So if you do your search for butter, it's gonna give you the price of butter that was there for three days ago because for some reason it, it bugged out and when you click on it to buy that's when you're going to see the actual accurate price so there are items in there that say they're worth 15 silver you click on it now it's 45 silver and you're like whoa what that's not right so there's a there's a lot of room to move in there and there's a lot of deals that are not being made so Check out stuff. Look at, take my advice from earlier and say, what do people want? I'm going to see if there's any deals on leather gear with precision on it. Go through and click on each one and see if the prices match or, or are further off. And you might be able to find a deal with those. So one last thing on the news, which a lot of people are saying one way, a lot of people are saying the other. There's, uh, there's a couple guys that have actually done tests on this and they're saying that contrary to most people's belief right now the magic find is affecting how the mystic forge works and you're actually getting benefits from magic find to use the mystic forge they've been trying this out with runes and sigils um one guy is saying that he's he's done like a couple hundred combines, which means a couple thousand, well, I think he said close to a thousand uh, sigils or runes. I forget which one he used. But whatever, it, it's cheap. He would put in uh, major runes and get back, a lot of the times he would get back superior runes, which are selling for a lot more than four major runes. And he was making... He was estimating 30 gold a day doing this right now. Wow. Uh, we will have a link to the thread that he talks about it in. He's given some numbers. It's still unknown. It's uh, Mystic Forge and Magic Find, dis the discussion one. It's just it's a forum thread that he talks about, and he does give out some numbers. It's uh, kind of convoluted, and you got to go through it, but it's worth paying attention to. Um, they did do a little bit of con consolidation on the thread on Reddit, but it's one of those things that right now there's nothing definitive, but they are saying that he's been getting about a 41% return on getting superior runes out of putting major runes in the Mystic Forge while he's wearing a 180% magic find on his gear. So it's... It's something to keep an eye out for in the next week or so. I'm sure if they get any actual numbers, it'll show up. It's towards the bottom of page 11, and a lot of page 12 talks about it. 
And one of the thoughts is it's not the magic find on your gear. It's a magic find booster. So they're also going to be testing that to see if, hey, you don't need magic find gear for the mad, uh, Mystic Forge. You'll, but if you use a um, magic booster from the gem store, now all of a sudden you got a better chance of getting higher items. It's a good way to boost your chances of getting a precursor if you're trying to go that way. So that's it for the news, but like I always say, keep keep an eye on that. Reddit is great. Uh, the hot posts and the new posts, you want to keep an eye on those. Patch notes. Um, patch notes. Patch notes are huge because they always signal changes. We were talking about it earlier. Tristan plays a Mesmer, and they did uh, some nerfs to his phantasms on certain weapons. So he's right off the bat, he says... Well, that looks like I'm going to start using a greatsword more. To me, that screams, okay, I should watch the greatsword market because Mesmers are now going to want to be buying greatswords or whatever. Um, Dig! Rangers just got a slight... <laughs> yeah. Horrible, horrible nerf. Don't touch my class. Yeah, right. Rangers right. just got a nerf that people are saying is more than what is supposed to be on the short bow because... The animation on the short bow was overriding itself because the speed of the auto attack for number one was slightly too fast. They said by 40 milliseconds, which is, you know, one fourth of a second or not one fourth, but uh, 0.04 seconds. And when they changed it so that the animation would come out correctly, Rangers are in a up uproar now saying that everything's going at about half speed on that bow. So it's a super big nerf. Well, to me, that says rangers are going to move away from short bows. So stop selling short bows to rangers if you're doing that at, at the moment and start selling something else, whatever the new flavor of the month is. So that's it for my news. Just keep an eye on the news. Um, one thing that I keep on thinking about going over and I haven't yet, there's a link that I made. It's a Google Docs link. It's... Uh, it's just a spreadsheet that I, I put together in about 10 minutes. And what it is, is it's every... It's hurting my price. brain. Yes. I don't know what's yes, happening. It's a bunch of numbers. <laughs> the numbers in bold are what the price is on the trading post. And it's copper from one copper all the way up to five silver and 20 copper. And the number on the right that's not in bold is the price of that item after the cut. So if something's worth, um, say, 25 copper, you can look at the sheet and you won't have to do any math. You can just say, okay, 25 copper turns into, what is it, 22 after trading post cuts. Oh, just just look at the and, sheet and don't have to do anything. Just just look at it. Got, yeah. Hey, see guys, can't you just look at this and figure it out? This makes total sense. What the <laughs> fuck are you talking about? Just look at the sheet. I feel like I'm like... I'm the freaking Rain Man here, and I gotta like freaking freaking decipher some fucking code to break the Da Vinci okay, code or something. Okay. What the so, fuck is this? <laughs> so let's say, let's say you want to sell something for, <laughs> mm, okay, for uh, thirty-five silver. Okay, I'm gonna go thirty. Is that what the numbers are here? Yes. So okay, I'm I at mean, thirty-five, 35 in, in bold, right? 35 in bold. Yeah. So I would look to the one next to it after the trading post cuts that 30 yeah. is what you're going to get. So okay. 35, uh, 35 copper on the trading post after cuts is really worth 30 copper to you. So it's for people that are good at numbers and like the <laughs> mathy part of it, they're going to like it. It's a reference sheet. Oh I tried to. Yeah. No, hey, I, I, I feel you, man. This is this is totally a good use of time. <laughs> but you know what? <laughs> it took me it took me all of ten minutes. That's I like my spreadsheets. Dude, I couldn't even so, type these what, numbers in ten minutes. What the what the fuck? Did you automate it or something? I didn't type all those numbers. I typed Oh, you people in your Excel, I swear to God. There's left brain, there's right numbers. brain, there's Star Trek and there's Star Wars, there's Excel and there's Microsoft Word, okay? That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. So here's another resource for you. Use tpcalc.com. Use this. There's going to be links. 
Yeah. Um, Use tpcalc.com, guys. This one with the with the pretty pictures of the gold and stuff. Yeah, that one. Use your use your calculator on your phone. Multiply the copper price times 0.85, like I said in the last one. All that good stuff. Um, so there's my little contribution. It took me no time. It's I like nice no, I like it. Me. I give you shit, but uh, you know, I I understand it. I just when well, I first you know looked at it, I swear to God, I think I had an aneurysm. <laughs> Well, there's plenty of people out there that are going to look at that and say, thank God there's a quick reference. I just I, – If I somebody is out there that stuff. says, thank God for this, first world problems to the fucking max right now. I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, uh, an easy reference for the amount of gold that you're spending on a, on a uh, fee in a video game and you need that sheet to – make your life easier that's definitely first world problems wow okay so let's get on to the good stuff the oh the yeah stuff that's actually making money right now <clears throat> are... we have to do like an intro for you or something we are now going to talk about the things that will make you money at the expense of his money so <laughs> enjoy here we go i've talked about a few of them um earlier on i was trying to hold off on them so i could do all this great stuff at the end but it was just it was smart to talk about it during the podcast so we did a couple uh couple of those was the inscriptions where you said inscriptions are bad because you looked at the one you found the one that didn't work but i'm sure like half of them don't work most of them one don't good work. way to yeah one good way to to figure out which ones work go to uh gw2spidey.com type in inscriptions in the search and then search by profit you should find some that are working there. What happened to my I Spidey link? You're not going to prove me wrong right now. I'm, but... No, I'm I'm I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I just I for some reason uh, I totally lost my Spidey link. Oh, there we go. Sorry, we're good. Uh, all right, let's pull this up. Spidey, what am I? I was just typing insignias, right? Uh, insignia, insignia and inscription. Oh, and and inscription. Yeah. Well, no, no. One, like, uh, cloth, like, what do you call it? The, the people who make the gear for chests and shoes and all that stuff, they use insignias. And then pe the classes, the, I'm just losing it right You know, now. it's not, it's not the, actually, no, I got you. It's not actually showing, it's not it's actually not showing, showing profit. Yeah. That's weird. Um, that's awkward. Oh, if you it, click it, no. Oh, it's called margin. No, but if you click, there, no, it doesn't have it. Is there? Mm -mm. Do insignia in the very top search bar, where yeah, next to the FAQ. Yeah, I just did. And then there's a, okay, on the very very far right, you might need to scroll over. No, there's, there's no scrolling. One. I'm telling, I'm telling you, man, it's not, doesn't have it. That's uh, which is weird because we were here like ten minutes ago and it had it for the stuff. So yeah, because when I pull it up, it says it. Anyway, there's a there's for most people that know how to use the internet, it Shut says margin the on the side. <laughs> on the on the very right, there's a min sale offer, max buy offer, and margin. Is what I'm seeing. You see it. So you click on the margin. When you type in insignia, you see it. Yeah, I see it. What the crap's over? In fact, in fact, I'm showing that Knight's intricate gossamer insignia is minimum sale offer is one gold ninety eight silver, max buy offer is one uh, one gold twenty seven silver sixteen copper with a fourteen uh, silver and fourteen copper margin. Sorry, forty one silver fourteen copper margin. A little dyslexic there. It's not giving so, me margin. I can click it and I can get the profit, but I won't. It doesn't give me a margin. Right. My shit's broken. And yeah, it might be a little bit buggy for you, but that's a good one to go in and say, okay, this one is. No, go to the top and type in. The very top of the page. No, I, I know. I tried bar. both of them, and nothing is. Did you? Yeah. 
Oh well, we won't argue That's my really my good. computers being stupid right now because obviously. Sorry guys, I wish I could show you. Just go to the website yourself, and apparently it will work for you and not for me. Yeah. So so, so are there? Can you make so some profit that. right now, off of those? Yeah, there's there's a good fifteen or twenty of them that you can do and uh, make anywhere. Like the top one is saying that just buying and selling, you can make a forty one. Uh, silver profit so if you put in buy orders you can you can get those so insignias are going good right now um, a lot of times you'll find the ones that are the crafting mats are really low on them uh, totems I think are a good one I think that's for healing totems 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 it, totems 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 Sorry. <clears throat> I'm still making money with loot bags I'm still open in loot bags I'm buying them for uh, for buy orders and then opening them, I'm doing like a stack at a time, a stack of 250, and like a supply bag, different versions of moldy bags. Um, you kind of got to find the ones that – I don't like the ones that are really low tier, like the tiny ones, because you get gathering tools out of them, with, and you also get account-bound uh, cooking materials that I don't like. Butter. But – yeah. Well, butter you can sell. I sell my butter. I should probably be sending it to you, but I had two coppers going in my pocket. <laughs> and so I'm opening loot bags that uh, drop from centaurs and humanoids and all that stuff, and people sell on the trading post, and opening them and then turning around and selling the mats. But one of the things I've done with that to make it even more profitable, if I just open it and sell the stuff, I make between 5 and 20 silver per stack of 250 for that middle tier stuff. If I turn those, because you get, you get cloth and you also get leather. If I turn that cloth and leather into bolts and squares and then use those bolts to make insignias, I make more profit. I've made as much as a gold 50 off of one stack just by selling the insignias instead of straight materials. And then also... The other thing that I talked about earlier is you turn those squares into leather coat panels and trouser panels and boot soles and uh, uh, boot uppers. And you should get, if you, again, search for the difference between crafting and pricing on a boot upper, a leather boot upper for whatever type of leather you have. Like I was dealing with rugged leather for a bit. So a, rug, a rugged leather coat panel I know was making me an extra if I sold it as just the leather section I would get 10 copper if I sold it as a square I would get uh, 39 copper but if I sold it as a coat panel I would get 5 silver and 21 copper now nice. you got to figure out how many pieces and the profit margins but I was getting like the difference between a 13% profit margin and I mean, a 13 copper profit margin and a one and a half silver co uh, copper margin or percent margin, whatever. So if they so have boot uppers, do they those... have boot downers? No, it's it's just the uppers and the soles. That's, it's an upper that's rough, for your man. soul. It's going to be rough for you. Yeah. Well, you just get so high on... The good music. That's why they have good music the in Guild Wars too. Is you, you play that after you take the boot upper. That's and right. And it'll just help you... And, Drugs uh, are bad, kids. So... <laughs> Don't do drugs. Don't do drugs. Uh, we talked about orange unidentified dyes. Those were uh, doing good this week. Halloween. And... That's right. Anything dealing with Halloween, and as, and as soon as ArenaNet says what they're doing for Halloween, that sort of stuff is going to sell really quickly. And... Hello. Somebody's sneaking up on me over here. Um, and the last thing is the runes and sigils are craftable. <laughs> You're sitting so still with that thing. I'm like, is it frozen? I'm going to move. Uh, the runes and sigils that the guy was testing out with the magic find gear, well, Okay, he's testing magic fine gear, but we found out through him that, oh, 
if you put those things in the Mad, uh, Mystic Forge, you can get back things that are worth more than the four that you put in on average, yeah. and you can make gold that way by selling those on the trading post. So that's one of the things that you definitely want to research, but you know that there's a margin there. You know that there's a, uh, a market that a lot of people aren't looking into because it's four steps. It's three steps, and people aren't trying too hard to do something that's do this, then this, then this, and then sell it because all of a sudden you're getting into a lot of math is you know is one sigil is one coat panel worth 33 leather sections or or um, 34 leather sections or 17 squares or where's the biggest profit margin there so those are some things that are definitely making money this week um oh one last thing that i just skipped over corrupted weapons corrupted weapons is one of those things that to get the recipe to make a corrupted weapon, and you make it with Huntsman, Artificer, and Weaponsmith, those are selling for more than the crafting materials, or they have been. And usually it's like a gold or more for, for a lot mm. of the ones that are profitable. Where you get these recipes is, after you kill the Claw of Jormag, there's a vendor that shows up back by where the, the cannons are, and he sells each of those recipes. There's like 30... 35 of them across the three different uh, disciplines. Those recipes sell for five silver and some change each. Well, you go and you learn those. If you've got a level 400 crafter of that discipline, now you can make these epic weapons, and they're orange-colored epic level 80 weapons called corrupted whatever, corrupted something stave, corrupted longbow, and... You make these, and they're selling for a profit. You're not going to do a bulk of them. You're not going to do a ton at once, but you will be able to sell them. And the other thing is those recipes are selling now too. So oh, nice. you buy them for five silver, sell them for 15 or 20. So go for those. Uh, Jormag event, Claw Jormag. Plus it's a damn – it, not to mention that's a damn cool event. That's probably one of the coolest dragon fights I think in this game. It's awesome. There's a yeah. lot of shooting. There's a lot of explosions. There's a lot of fucking... It, just check it out. I'm not going to spoil it. And it's a it's a cool dragon and mm -hmm. all that. It's in the Norn so, level 70 to 80 zone, just so you know, with the polar bears. Yeah. Frost Gorge Sound is the name of the zone. Yeah. And they're not polar bears. And they're like that happens every else. like three hours? Yeah, every three yeah. hours. Mm -hmm. From when it was killed last. Mm -hmm. And that's it for my stuff we will definitely have the links up on alltabme.com cool and uh so what i want to do now right at the two hour mark yeah what i want to do now though is we had some really cool interesting questions so you know what we're going to go over our two hour mark by just a little bit uh i'm going to take 10 of the best questions i already wrote down two of them so that leaves eight so feel free to ask questions now and i will look over after we answer these first two uh the first question is there a pit uh Wait. Oh, what should a first-time seller or buyer, someone that's just hitting the uh, the trading post, be looking out for? Like, what what's what's your advice for someone brand new to this? They came on the podcast, they're hearing all these things, and they're like, "Oh my God, spreadsheets, numbers that he made, I don't understand." What's your first line of advice? The first thing you should do is everybody while they're leveling and while they're playing the game is gonna get loot. So you should get your feet wet with the loot that you already have in your bags. Uh, we went over it a lot on the last podcast, and definitely look back and watch that one about how to buy and sell correctly by using buy orders, by using sell orders, matching um, the people instead of undercutting, and what and by take the loot that is in your bag and cl right click on it, click sell on the trading post, and hover over it to see if you are selling for at vendor price or if you're doing it for more because you don't want to lose money with that vendor price. So after you get your feet wet and you see how everything works, then what you're going to want to do is use that TP calc. Always have that open if you're not going to do your look at my spreadsheet that I showed you just now or, or do it on your calculator. But you get in there and click on 
different items that you think would sell. If it's something that you would want, say you Somebody your, else is going to uh, want it. Yeah. Yeah. The, the idea, I think, to, ba to really, really cut it down basically, like to really just get down to the basics of it because we covered so much of this in podcast one, which, by the way, alttabme.com, still there. Uh, it'll tell you all, like you said, it'll tell you all the basics of selling. It'll help you out a lot. Um, but literally, just go through the world. An item drops. Don't equip it right away. If it's a blue item, equip it. And then when you're done with it, you can still sell it because it's not bound to you. So... If you used it and you think it's great, then right-click it, like he said, check out the trading post, see what it's selling for. And if it's more than what it would sell for at a vendor, try it out. Play your luck. You know, that's that's how you get your feet wet is you try it out. So yep. <clears throat> next question. Is there a particular class that would be better for farming in Guild Wars 2? Other MMOs have been known for people finding particular classes to do certain jobs better than others. Example... Uh, WoW is uh, a, a mage and the wizard in um, Diablo, AoE low-level mobs, thief, you know, blah, 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 blah. What are your thoughts on that? It really depends. Like I said earlier, when, you're, when we talk about farming, there's, there's a couple different ways to farm. There's farming for gathering nodes, and if you're going to do that, you want someone with a lot of escape abilities because you're going to be running past mobs. You want somebody who has speed boosts. The thief I found out really doesn't have any speed boosts. Like the ranger has the war horn that makes you run faster for 15 seconds. The the warrior does too. Uh, elementalist is one of the fastest classes in the game because it's got so many different ways of jumping forward and and running faster. So if you're going to do something that's that's gathering like that, so you you want to gather copper or or calcum or or wood or whatever. You want a fast class. If you're going to do something that's um, gathering or farming for rare materials where you're going out solo and killing certain mobs for their drops by yourself, then you're going to want a class that is good at killing, something that can drop things really quickly. Uh, I personally like my ranger for that because I can have my pet tank and I can sit back and put a lot of damage on it, and I can pick up three or four mobs at a time, whereas if I was a thief, I could kill one at a time, but if I get three or four, I'm not going to do so well, and I'm probably going to die because a thief is more bursty. So, I think if you were to look at the, that, the number one, I think, I think if, if, you were to, if you were to sum it up as the number one uh, profession that can really rock out at doing everything, no gathering, AOE, everything. all that stuff, it's the elementalist. I mean, I don't, think there, I don't think there's any argument against that. It's got every AOE in the game. It's got close range AOE, it's got high damage AOE, it's got long range AOE, and it's got speed buffs that can last you a lifetime. So yeah. if you're really you just looking into that, yeah, I mean, if you're just looking for a farming character, then check out the elementalist. Um, it does have a high learning curve, though, so it might not be your play style. But if it, I mean, if you're just using it for for that, then maybe it's it's right, right exactly what you need. Yeah, yeah. Because if you're farming mobs and dynamic events, you want to tag everything you can. I was going to say elementalist is great for that. Warrior is actually pretty popular too. But yeah, elementalist will do a ton of AOE and tag everything you need to tag. Yeah. So <clears throat> let's see here. Um, la, 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 la. Oh, you know what? Someone brings up a good point. You know what? I, I, I agree. Uh, the, uh, the secondary class, I think, if you were to put it there, is the Guardian. He's got the staff that has this giant cone AoE. He's got this uh, greatsword that has the spinning zealot. Zealot? No. It's, uh, I don't know what it's called. It's, he's got uh, runes that go on the ground to do, do damage AoE. Um, and he also has basically unlimited speed buffs as well with uh, retreat uh, one of your uh, utility skills and the staff itself having a speed buff so um, the guardian I think would come close second for farming the other good thing about a guardian he's got a lot of survivability mm -hmm. where the elementalist doesn't yes. if you get everything on you so you can be in the middle of these big battles that people are you know these dynamic events where there's a lot of people and you can just sit in the middle and just by click 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 so if that's your thing there you go 
Uh, <laughs> I like this one. What percentage <laughs> of the best strategies do you keep to yourself? I keep 90% of, no. Um, <laughs> actually, I've not really kept a whole lot to myself. The only things that I'm really keeping are the things that I'm still testing out, the things that I'm not sure if it's going to work out or not, because I don't want to give you guys bad information. The reason I'm doing that in this one, in other games, I was keeping a lot of secrets for myself. I wasn't. I had a lot of people asking me, what's this? What's good with that? How do I do this? Walk me through it. I would only give people about half of that in other games, but this game, the economy being a worldwide economy and the fact that it auto-corrects itself so quickly and so well and the fact that ArenaNet really did it right, I found that even if I give away a strategy, like the loot bag strategy that I talked about last time and this time, and the fact that all the gold blogs had it on a week before we did our podcast last time and there's still money to be made off of it, I found that when something is mentioned, if it's not a speculation like those uh, sugar pumpkins that may or may not do something um, in the future, and you're just trying to get people to buy your stock, if it's if it's a legitimate thing that will has worked, even if it if it tanks, even if it bounces way up because somebody mentioned it, I found that give it a week or two, and yeah. I mentioned this last week, it it should come back. It should get back to the point where it's profitable again and i found things that will go in and out of profitability i've talked about changing wood logs into planks last week and certain days there's a high profit margin for it which is you know five to seven copper per plank and some days it's not it's no profit margin whatsoever but i just keep an eye on all that so i'm giving away most of my strategies but the reason is i've seen all that come back after I tank it for a couple days. Just like I said earlier with the blood saw set. I tanked it last last week for a day or two, but it's it's coming back. Yeah, that makes sense. Um let's see how huh? we kinda we kinda answered uh you know where you gather or or uh, the ore and all the different nodes and stuff. Uh we post the podcast and we're, we have a – there's already – here. Wow. User words just that – Yeah, we do have a – If you go to alttabme.com. Yeah, it's like me. I popped it up right here. Uh, you'll see I already posted Podcast 16, How to Make Money Part 2, Q&A. Uh, this includes all the links that we just talked about. Uh, it has the gathering node map. It's got the tier 6 gathering node. It's got all that stuff. And then uh, it will also have the video once it's done. Um, and you can feel free to ask questions there, but it has all the links to all that stuff that we've already talked about. As well, um, if you go to uh, the, just the normal forums or you go to the news page, which is alltabme.com, if you scroll down, there's number one on how to make money. And if you click that, you will see if you scroll down that there is the summary of the podcast, everything we touched on, as well as links to everything we've talked about. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm not going to go into it in detail because you can go there and you can check it out for yourself. Um, also, if you go to the website, uh, members of our site is, and TIG uh, is more than happy to answer any of your questions if anything's confusing, doesn't make sense. We even touched upon some of the, uh, some of the salvaging kit stuff because it was a little confusing last time and we, I think we clarified that right. a little more in this podcast. So let's see here. Um, and I, we do have – I did find maps – of where all the top level stuff, the Orichalcomor, the um, Omnom Berries, and the Ancient Wood is gathered. There's some player created maps. That's we've got links for that in uh, in this podcast. So I'm sure it's he said it's up on the website already. So if you're looking for those top level ones that are worth the most amount to gather, those are already up there. Yep. So I think that's going to be it for the night. Um... Great questions. Thanks for participating. Some of your comments were very helpful. I mean, it helped us to further direct it to you. So for everyone that's watching this on Wednesday, uh, we are live every Monday at 5.15 p.m. Eastern. And then we push the podcast to YouTube on Wednesdays for you to check out on your leisure. And you can go to alttabme.com slash live to watch it live and participate in these. Or you can post questions at alttabme.com 
uh, in the threads or on the forums. We have a very active community. We have a lot of people that are willing to help. Guys like, uh, you know, my webcam is always backwards. You know how hard it is to point to people? My, there. Yeah. Eh, eh, eh. This guy over here, uh, for one of the helpful guys, you know? Yeah, you're over there. Yeah. I'm, no, I'm over whatever. Anyway, he can, he's more than willing to help out. Post your questions there. Check it out. Uh, we're an easygoing bunch of people. Also, um, we covered it in the beginning. Two things to check out. Pink in LA, the event that uh, helps support breast cancer. It's uh, Breast Cancer Awareness. It's going to be in Guild Wars 2. Uh, it originally started in Guild Wars 1. Everybody wears pink. It's on October 20... 20th. 20th. Yes, I didn't want to, I didn't want to get that wrong. It's on October 20th. Arcanix will be hosting the event on Yak's Bend. Uh, I don't have all the details yet, but when I do, we will make a post on the forums. Please come out. Come meet us. There's real prizes involved. You can win some cool stuff. Everybody wears pink. I like pink. You like pink, maybe. You don't want to tell people that you like pink. Whatever. You're not as cool as me. But uh, come out. Check it out and uh, help support a really great cause. It's going to raise money for um, cancer awareness in real life. And it's gonna, you know, it makes a really good impact, and it's it's nice to bring the community together in the game as well. Um, last note: we just re reopened our applications for our guild Arcanix. Um, we do take our applications very seriously, so please read the uh, information before you fill out <laughs> the application. Otherwise, you will get denied. Um, we do have one one of the main requirements is that you have at least five posts on our forums, and that's so that we get to know you. We really want our family to stay tight and we want it to be a good community for everybody to enjoy playing the game and you know we all know each other we I mean look I got my real name up there Mike's got his real name up there um, we know stuff about each other you know in real life too you know we come home from work and we talk about that just as much as we talk about anything so without making this a total plug for the guild which it's not um, thank you so much for watching and we will see you guys next time Bye.